Hey, what's going on everybody? Commander Crane here, and we are back with another Pioneer Deck Tech, and today we're going to be talking about Ores of Bats. I'm very excited to bring this list to you, as always, at the end of the video. Let me know in the comment section below, what do you think about the deck? Is there a specific bat that I forgot to include in this deck? Or do you have suggestions for upcoming videos? Just let me know in the comment section. So again, Two quick things before we hop into here too. So the first thing is this is our third video of, you know, featuring new cards from the new Bloom Burrow set. As of the day of this recording, the set is not quite out. We're right at the end of spoiler season. I just wanted to go ahead and mention that. The other thing is, so with this deck, I've kind of had a deck like this ready for a while. So when Lost Caverns of Ixalan came out, we did get a little bit of bat support. And I thought about, I tried to make a bat deck at the time, but it really just didn't... It really just didn't work for the most part, and I'm very glad that I waited because we had a couple of sweet new bats from this new set, and I really, really do like, I really like, obviously we got the thumbnail there, which is one of the new bats, but this deck is sweet. So let's go and hop into here. What bats are we actually playing in this deck? So these are the true bats that we're actually playing in this deck. So we're playing four Deep Cavern Bat, two Dark Star Augur, and four Zoraline Cosmos Caller. So Deep Cavern Bat is pretty self-explanatory. Deep Cavern Bat is sweet. This card is really, really good. Being able to take a card from our opponent's hand, it's exiled unless the bat leaves. The card is really, really good, obviously, for those who play standard or even modern. You know how good Deep Cavern Bat is. Dark Star Augur is really, really is really sweet. So I, when I originally built this deck, Dark Star Augur had originally not been uh, spoiled yet, and I'm really glad that I waited to record this because this card is sweet. It's essentially a three mana Dark Confidant, but it's four for four mana. You get two Dark Confidants, which is pretty good. At the beginning of your upkeep, reveal the top card of your library and put that card into your hand. You lose like equal to its mana value. So the only thing is keep this in mind. You know our most expensive card in this deck is three mana, so we're not gonna take a crazy amount of damage with this. Obviously, Zoraline helps us gain some life, but do keep that in mind. If you do offspring this, you don't want to do it at a low life total because you will die from this. So do keep that in mind. And honestly, I think this is my favorite card in the deck. Zoraline Cosmos Caller. This card is sweet. 3-3 three, three for 3 with Flying and Vigilance. Whenever a bat you control attacks, you gain 1 life. And then whenever Zoraline enters or attacks, you may pay Orzov into life. When you do return target, non-land permanent card with mana value 3 or less from your graveyard to the battlefield with the finality counter on it, which means when it dies, it goes to exile instead. I really like Zoraline. This card is sweet, really good stats, just on its own. It's already a pretty good card. And then we have the, obviously, the bat text on there, which is sweet. So these are, you know, this is only uh, 10 bats, though. We obviously have to have some other bat support in this deck. What else are we doing? So... The next card on this deck is really, really sweet. We're playing two copies of Desecrated Tomb. Whenever one or more creature cards leave your graveyard, create a 1-1 one, one black bat creature token with flying. And obviously, we want creatures leaving our graveyard a lot more than they normally do. That's why we're playing four Cauldron Familiar and four Witches Oven. So it is technically a cat oven shell, kind of. It's more just... Actually, no. I would say we're playing a bat deck, and we also just happen to be playing Cauldron Familiar and Witches Oven. What's really cool is with Zoraline, if our opponent happens to destroy half the combo, we can bring it back with Zoraline, which is pretty sweet, and it still does trigger the Desecrated Tomb, which is pretty cool. So, we're playing Culture Familiar Witch's Oven and just Desecrated Tomb, because why not? It's really, really cool. But, that's not even the last Bat card we're actually playing in this deck. The last Bat card we're actually playing is Bat Colony. We're playing four copies of Bat Colony. Two and a white, when it enters the battlefield, make a 1-1 one, one bat with flying for each mana from a cave spent to cast it. Whenever a cave enters the battlefield under control, put a plus one plus one counter on target creature you control and yes we are playing a cave deck this is a black white bat cave you know cat oven deck this this deck is really really spicy i'm sorry i'm just i'm laughing just because how how cool this deck is but yeah bat colony is sweet basically gives us three bats and then whenever we play cat um caves after that it buffs our creatures ideally we're going to want to put all these one one counters on um deep cavern bat just because it has the life link on it so do keep that in mind deep cavern bat is a perfect target for all of those extra plus one plus one counters all right so now we're playing you know a bunch of other instants and sorceries and mostly removal but we are playing four copies of thought seize thought seize is really good enough said it's one of the best cards in the entire format and that's why we're playing four copies of it and then rounding out our non-lands we're playing a whole bunch of removal we're playing four fatal push two bitter triumph and four vanishing verse fatal push obviously is pretty self-explanatory it's a really good removal spell also normally i don't mention things like this for those who are you know keep an eye on these kind of things so fatal push there i got the 50 cents mark so 
This specific one is not 50 cents, but the new Assassin's Creed Fatal Push, they go for about 50 cents a piece right now as of the recording of this video. If you don't have Fatal Pushes and you want to play them, I highly suggest picking them up. They're going to go right back up pretty darn soon, so definitely pick up your Fatal Pushes as soon as possible. Bitter Triumph is really sweet with this deck just because of Zoroline. If we, you know, discard a card, you know, like specifically like a, a Deep Cavern Bat or something, we can buy it back with Zoroline, which is pretty sweet. So definitely a huge fan of the Bitter Triumph. And the Vanishing Verse is really good. We're in Orzov, so we get to play Vanishing Verse. This card is absolutely incredible. I think it's one of the most underrated removal spells in the entire format. And I know it's mostly because, you know, there's not a lot of Orzov decks going around. And the ones that are Orzov do play Vanishing Verse. I just think this card is absolutely incredible. And that's why we're playing a full four copies of it so all right let's go and hop into our lands here and i love our land base our land base is so awesome so obviously we need some caves to be able to play the bat colony so we're playing four sunken citadel four hidden necropolis and four hidden courtyard as our main caves that we're playing so sunken citadel we're not doing any field of ruin shenanigans we're doing nothing like that really the reason we're playing sunken citadel is because a it's a cave and b it helps us activate our hidden necropolis and our hidden courtyards in another cave that's um on our next slide here with sunken citadel you're going to want to be naming black most of the time obviously you can name white or black which that's also the nice thing too it is it, you know it's a uh, yeah, it's just a good dual land for the most part it's a dual land that's also a cave so then obviously we got the hidden necropolis and the hidden courtyard with the uh discover which is pretty sweet late game if we've got nothing going on go ahead and crack them and discover why not it's a pretty good value there so next slide here we're playing four cavern or small that is our other cave that we're playing it becomes a three three elemental creature until in a turn it's still a cave activate only the number of other caves you control plus the number of cave cards in your graveyard is three or greater which obviously we're gonna have three caves so we get a nice man land it's just really good sunken citadel can obviously activate it all by itself so definitely a huge fan of cavern or small and then guess what we're also playing for godless shrine i wanted an untapped land i decided to play godless shrine um you know i thought about playing concealed courtyard but godless shrine can come into play untapped at any point in the game so that's why we're playing the godless shrine and then rounding out our lands we're playing one plains and one swamp that's all it is this mana base is super simple we wanted to maximize the caves but i still wanted to play a couple dual lands and a few basics in there so and as our spicy basic land of the day like the other videos we're playing a couple of the bloomboro lands we're obviously playing the plains i really love the swamp i think the swamp art is really really cool here um i i just i really like the art in this set i think the all the full art basics are really really sweet and i'm very happy to feature them here on the channel so that's the entire main board don't go anywhere yet though we still have to talk about our sideboard as well as some budget options so the sideboard is really simple we're gonna want some graveyard hate normally i would say play rest in peace because we're a white deck but unfortunately we're using our graveyard as well play Leyline line of the void i think Leyline line of the void is the best uh option that we can currently play because again we don't want to hate on our graveyard it's really really important you're gonna want some extra copies of duress duress comes in against a number of different decks in this format it's really good i would probably play about three copies of it i also really like path of peril path of peril does kill a lot of our own creatures but you know if we're playing against like any small low to the ground aggro deck for instance like boros convoke we're definitely gonna want the path of perils you could also if you want to play like four mana you could play um oh my goodness i always forget the name of the card it's uh four mana you choose a creature type and then other creatures um creatures that aren't of the chosen type get minus three minus three i always forget the name of that card and it's not creeping chill but it's it's something really really close to that but i do like that that is also a solid option but i also would play some damping spheres it's really good against lotus field combo and mono green devotion it's just really good i definitely recommend playing some copies of damping sphere it's also really good against quintorius combo so do keep that in mind and the last thing we have to talk about is the budget options for this deck which i'm gonna be honest with you there's hardly any the only budget alternatives you could really do for this deck is take out the godless shrines and the thought seizes i would put the duress in the main i would just play four main board duress and then i would cut the godless shrines for probably caves of coilos and that's it boom that's the budget deck obviously the sideboard you could retool that a little bit but the current list as it is right now is only 150 us dollars we're playing a, a whole bunch of like commons and uncommons especially ones that are really cheap so that's why this deck is incredibly cheap a fully tuned list for only 150 us dollars is almost unheard of and i was able to get the budget list down to 75 dollars which again all i did was cut the godless shrine i cut the thought seas and retooled the sideboard a little bit that's all it is 75 dollars for a really really sweet uh bat deck which again i really like bats i think they're really cool and i'm i'm happy that bats finally got some support in pioneer there was a couple of different bats that were good like aklazots that it did not end up featuring in this deck but i still think they're really strong if you'd like to try them out for yourself so i was really excited to do a bat deck i'm glad that i waited 
um, until Bloomboro to do the bat uh, deck instead of doing it during uh, Ixalan because this deck is sweet. So that takes us to the end of the video here. Thanks so much for watching. The deck lists are in the description below. We got the regular list and the budget list if you'd like to check those out for yourself. Huge shout out to our channel members, Ralph, Matt, Arcadius, Ray, Gary, and Sarwanoki. If you were interested in being a channel member, it's only one US dollar a month. You get access to the exclusive Discord as well as other features here on the channel. So I'm Commander Crane. Thanks for watching this video, and I hope to catch you in the next one.